Delphox has a super exclusive ability called Magician, where if you have no item, you steal the opponents when you hit them. We can give Delphox the Power Herb, which allows you to use two turn moves in one turn, paired with Solar Beam for immediate huge damage and great coverage. Since we use up our item, we're able to just yoink the opponents off them, and with super solid speed at base 104 and 114 special attack, Delphox can actually be a monster. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got myself a team full of some absolute weird dudes, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, it'll only take you a second, and I promise it will be worth it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Garchomp. I decide to toss out Young Face Paint, the absolute OG Mamoswine. And now it's time to see if this guy's got Balls of Steel or not. If he leads Garchomp, it means it's likely going to be a Stealth Rock lead. I'm just going to go for the rocks of my own. However, they do not want to take an Icicle Crash to the nose, and they decide to switch out. And in comes the Corviknight. So, this thing's kind of annoying. I imagine it's probably here to go for that Defog, just blow away the Stealth Rocks that I worked so hard to lay up here. However, I do want to maintain the Focus Ash that I do have on the Mamoswine here. I can't really touch this defensive ass armored chicken, so I decide to get out of here. And you know who does like this matchup is the absolute beast that is Delphox. So, I'm going to bring in the Delphox here, and I can definitely force this thing out with the threat of a flamethrower. Uh, in comes the absolute stick, because I, I keep that stick on me. And they do actually end up going for the body press here. So, of course, I do resist that. The fire psychic typing helping us out here. And I imagine the Corviknight does not want the smoke here. So, I just decide to go for the flamethrower, my safest option. I would love to bait in the Quagsire and try to hit him with that uh, immediate solar beam. But they decide to go into the Garchomp instead. So, what I could really use against this thing is some solid chip damage. My team doesn't deal with it that well, and it's just overall a problem. So, I go for that flamethrower. It does not do much, of course, but I do actually get the burn, which that is actually amazing because a lot of the time Garchomp can set up, it has strong earthquakes, it could potentially be like Swords Dance Scale Shot, and this thing is essentially, it's always a problem. So getting the burn on there is super nice. And now I figure I have the defensive Terra. Uh, it's actually both offensive and defensive, right? I can go for that Grass Terra, which is going to allow me to take an earthquake, especially with the burn extremely nicely. And it also gives us the stab for our solar beam. So I'm going to go ahead and just commit that Terra at this point. I figure either he predicts a switch and goes for Stealth Rocks and I can get up a free attack, uh, or I just take an earthquake with no problem. So I stick the old flower on my head and we are ready for action at this point. I'm just going to go for the Psy Shock for as much damage as possible. We actually end up landing a critical hit. So the luck has been on our side at this point. We get both the burn and the crit here, so you feel a little bit bad, but... They actually predict the switch and go for the Stealth Rock, so um, that just keeps us as healthy as possible here, and it's looking like one more Psy Shock should be able to take care of this thing, um, but this Delphox Fox does have one more gimmick in the form of Encore, so just to play it extremely safe, I'm actually just going to go for the Encore here, force him to go for the Stealth Rock again here, which obviously you can't do, but hey, you look great, buddy, go ahead and, you go ahead and lay them up again, so I mean, I should have just probably clicked Psy Shock once more to knock it out, but... The first one being a crit, I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play it safe here and just, just click that encore because why not? But in reality, I should just go for the Psy Shock and finish this thing off. But it is what it is. Del Fox is just out here, just being an absolute menace like we like to be. So I go for one more shock, and they're actually gonna end up switching out here. So they don't have a whole lot of switch ins to the Del Fox defensively, to be honest. But they decide to go into the Sinistra. So. A majority of the time, these things are invested in physical defense with like a calm mindset. So this thing comes in, I hit it with a Psy Shock and it knocks it to around half. Meaning the next one, accounting for the Stealth Rock damage, isn't going to be able to knock it out. And I figure the damage calcs say that even accounting for its heat proof ability, Flamethrower actually does more if it's physically defensive invested. But it's not quite enough to knock it out there and it does uh, get to go for that Macha Gacha. So me being grass type, we love ourselves some Macha Tea. However, the TB a little bit a little bit too hot sometimes, it does actually uh, end up getting the burn, which obviously is fine being a special attacker. It's just going to whittle down Delphox a little bit, but honestly, not really the end of the world here. So we're sitting at about half. I know that I can knock this thing out. I also know there's pretty much nothing that can switch into Delphox. Um, and I just go for one more Psy Shock and down goes the Sinistra. So it's actually amazing to see that thing gone. I don't have to worry about Strength Sap or any more Macha Gacha burns at healing itself and just... All around, just a dick Pokemon. So it's out of the way, and Delphox is over here doing exactly what we want it to do. But we're not quite done yet. However, they decide to go into the Hisuian Arcanine. So listen, you bring in Hisuian Arcanine on this matchup, I figure they're probably going to be Choice Scarf. Uh, I also don't have anything guaranteed to knock it out. So I feel like, you know what, now's a good time to bring in the Lumineon. Yes, I'm literally using the fish that no one's ever used before because... I like this thing. Game Freak needs to buff it, and I figured it's actually pretty decent special defensive uh, set here. But he goes for the extreme speed, which tells me it is not going to be Choice Scarf, and 
I take around half from that. So I'm actually just going to go for the U-turn, expecting them to potentially switch, and they actually do. So I can grab myself a nice little pivot here, Liminion looking majestic as ever, and they decide to go into the Quagsire, which is an easy switch into Liminion, of course. Uh, but now I grab myself a U-turn, which allows me uh, to go into whatever I want against this thing. So, of course, the obvious answer is going to be the Delphox. I would like to hit it with a Solar Beam. However, I decide instead to go into Kamala. Now... This thing is here to do a few things. First of all, be a sleepy little guy. Second of all, I can get up some rapid spin to get rid of Stealth Rock, and I can also have the Yawn support uh, to allow potential setups in the back. So, first of all, I wanna go for a Yawn here. Getting this thing to sleep is gonna allow it to be a whole lot easier to take care of. Uh, if Delphox can't do it, at least having it asleep, I can whittle it down. So, I do go for that Yawn, and this Quagsire is gonna end up actually being a curse set. So, it gives himself a nice little attack and defense boost, and the Quagsire can get out of hand quickly if, <laughs> They have, uh, if you don't have a solid grass answer, plus with the option for them to Terra, it's just, it can be a menace. So, if falling asleep next turn is amazing, and at this point, I do want to go for the Rapid Spin. Now, getting rid of the Hazards is going to allow a couple different things, but mostly Mamoswine being able to switch in and still have his Focus Ash intact is going to be a great answer to things like their Arcanine. So, I get that Rapid Spin up, say, screw your Stealth Rocks. And the Quagsire is just going to go right for an Earthquake here. We are able to take one of them even after the boost, which is nice. But more importantly, Quagsire is now going to fall asleep. And falling asleep on an off turn means that I can basically I can hard switch in and they have a guaranteed turn of sleep. So now seems like a pretty good time to bring back in the Delphox, a figure. This thing has been popping off. It has a great matchup against their squad. There's really not a lot that can switch into it. So we bring back in the old Flower Fox and hit him with the stick. So, of course, my main goal here is to just go for that nice little stab-boosted Solar Beam, which should easily knock this thing out. Um, we can go for it in one turn, of course, because we have that Power Herb item, and it's extremely important for Delphox to actually get rid of its item, so then we can do some Magician stuff and literally steal there. So, I do go for the Solar Beam, they decide to stay in here, and this poor little fella is about to get his ass beamed into next Thursday. So, of course, two-turn move is going to be one turn because of that Power Herb, and we absolutely blast him with the old laser. Um, so... <laughs> Could not be a more perfect Pokemon to showcase the old Solar Beam uh, Delphox capabilities. But also, since we used our item, we are able to actually steal there. So Magician gives us a Citrus Berry, and at the range we're at, we're actually able to eat it immediately. Uh, which brings us a little bit of extra health. So we just absolutely bully the shit out of that Quagsire. Not only knock his ass out, but we also eat his lunch. So Magician is amazing and still going to be intact because now the next time I touch something, I'll also steal their item considering I used... Uh, the citrus berry so we've used two items so far and delphox is doing exactly what it's here to do and now they're just going to go back into the arcanine so i figure i'm actually just going to switch back into kamala here this thing doesn't do a whole lot for me uh, it's slow they have a lot of answers to it and i was at least already able to get rid of their stealth rock so i bring this thing in basically for a sack sometimes you gotta sack off the little the little cute koala but they actually end up going for the terra here and it is going to end up being the Terra Fire. Now, listen, Hisui and Arcanine, whenever this thing is around, the game is not safe. Especially if it gets a nice little boost to its Fire Stab and then not taking the recoil from the Flare Blitz. It also has the option for Head Smash and uh, overall, the dual stab on this thing is kind of crazy. So, it goes for that Flare Blitz uh, with the Terra. I'm actually happy to see the Fire Terra here. That means there's not going to be a crazy defensive Terra later on in the match. And I figure I could just use this opportunity for Mamoswine to do exactly what I wanted it to with that Focus Sash. It means I do have to burn the Sash here, but if I'm able to take care of the Arcanine, I am totally fine with that. So, I bring in Face Paint, and that's extremely important that the Stealth Rock is gone, because now I know that I can take a Flare Blitz from this thing, and then I can fire back with the Earthquake. So, they do just stay in, go for that Blitz, and obviously obliterate my ass. But, the Focus Sash comes in clutch here. And then there's no way in hell you're going to be living that Earthquake. So, down goes the Arcanine, probably the main Pokemon we are afraid of here. It's looking like we're in pretty good shape, but there's definitely some work to do. They have three Pokemon left at this point, and one of them being uh, something that is really annoying, and that is going to be the Alolan Ninetales. So, uh, on the free switch, they actually do decide to bring in the Ninetales here. Now, most of the time, this thing is here to set up the Aurora Veil. Uh, which obviously gives them a reflect and a light screen, but it comes in, it takes a little bit of Stealth Rock chip, and I figure they're probably going to go for that Aurora Veil here, so I just want to get as much chip as possible on this thing, and I'm going to go for the Earthquake. Uh, they actually instead end up going for the Blizzard, which of course does take care of the Mamoswine, and uh, I'm actually relatively fine with that, because if they don't have the Veil up, um, I should have an answer to this thing in the back. So, I'm like, you know what, screw it. I'm actually going to bring in the fish here, because if they don't have 
freeze dry, I should be in pretty good shape here to get a surf off and put it in range to where Choice Scarf Crocodile can knock it out. They do in fact have the freeze dry, but this is the greatest fish of all time. I'm able to actually live it because I'm literally max HP and special defense invested. I get off a surf, a crit puts it in easy range to where I can knock it out later, and the fish did exactly what I needed it to do there. I honestly did not expect to live that freeze dry, but one more is going to take care of me, and now I have gotten the exact chip that I need uh, to where the only thing I actually have that outspeeds this is going to be that Scarf Crocodile. So I bring in the Bandit, and it is time to execute, baby. I can't go into Delphox because they definitely have Moonblast coverage to knock me out and outspeed. So the Crocodile is kind of my last chance here. So I'm just going to go for the close combat. The reason is they do have the Corviknight in the back that I can't Earthquake, but luckily they stay in here. The close combat takes care of the Ninetales. And while we do get ourselves our defense drop, I'm fine with that because I am the fastest thing on the field at this point. And we also get our Moxie ability to give us a nice little plus one in attack. So they're down to two Pokemon. It's going to be the Garchomp and the Corviknight. And in comes the Garchomp. We've gotten enough damage on this thing to the point where uh, a plus one close combat definitely knocks it out. And we've effectively turned this Garchomp into a, a wet paper towel. He did not do much this match. Close combat is going to finish it off. And we actually even get ourselves to plus two with the Moxie, which is amazing. Our defenses are absolute ass at this point, but all I need to do is uh, take care of the Armored Bird. And even at plus two, uh, a non-stab close combat probably doesn't knock that thing out, because I imagine it's you know fully physically defensive. But that is going to be their final Pokemon. They bring in the Corviknight here, and I feel confident that, especially with the Delphox in the back, we should be in pretty good shape against this thing. So... Corviknight is over here getting his last little flaps of freedom. I do go for one more close combat here, and it does do some huge damage to defensive Corviknight, especially with a crit, but it doesn't quite end up knocking it out. It brings it down to red, which allows them to easily knock me out with the uh, the body press here, especially with minus two defense. Crocodile does go down, but did exactly what we needed it to do, and it's only fitting that now I can just go into Delphox, easily outspeed, and finish off the game with the the MVP. Honestly, I've been a Delphox kind of hater for a little bit, honestly. But this thing is super fun to use, um, and it's actually it's it's really good with this kind of set. So I go for the flamethrower, able to finish off the Corviknight, and that is going to be the end of the match. So the funniest part here is actually that since I don't even have an item, I'm able to actually steal his Rocky helmet. So it'd be a funny sight watching Delphox go over to his dead body and just put on his helmet and say. Thanks. Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of the match. Thank you guys very much for watching. For real, I do appreciate all the support. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on the video. It definitely helps out a lot, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.